Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> To another edition of the Vegas Squares podcast. It is our golf betting show. It's the middle of the week, and it is a brand new PGA year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, the Tour Championship just ended last week. We are back in the Zoom studio here with Token Tony and Tony Johnson. Uh, gentlemen, before we move into this new year with the Safeway Open uh, from Wine Country, uh, let's go ahead and recap that Tour Championship. I know we had what you guys claimed to be called a light week, but how did that week go for you guys? I, I won my one and only bet. I had Scotty Scheffler oh. uh, in that matchup. I ended up laying the juice. Uh, yeah. But it's not juice if you win, right? Oh, that's a good bet. Yeah. I mean, especially winning by, what, 15 shots? I mean, yeah, that was clearly the right side. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But, uh, no uh, to- to- at all. Token, no. how did it go for you in the tour championship? Uh, not good at all. Uh, just I, – I, it wasn't completely 04, but it was, it was I think, a loss. Two, two out of seven. Yeah, I only had the one uh, future bet, <laughs> bet and uh, he that, player, dead last. <laughs> that player finished 30th out of 30 players. So that's kind of fun. Thank you, Billy Horschel. But, uh, you know, but that's, that's what you do. You know, you take a 250 to one shot, you know, it's, it's go big or go home. And if he doesn't have, he doesn't have it. So I'm certainly not, you know, upset at the bet, you know, whatever. And, uh, but uh, yeah, the matchups went really well. Um, yeah, I ended up going three and one with the matchups and I didn't have anything else. I never added a, a future Never really added anything, you know, anything uh, to say. I just didn't – I wasn't that comfortable with the tournament the way it was going on. So, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good week with the matchups uh, and only lost one future. So, yeah, we had a good week. Um, no complaints. Yeah, it was a good tournament as a whole. I mean, you yeah. got to give uh, some props for DJ. I mean, the guy's had a hell of a month. I think he made close to $18 million in one month. Amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Uh, for sure and people say there's nothing there's no money in golf <laughs> uh, they don't Eight say that anymore, anymore. no, no anymore. Anymore. that's true that's true they they there's there's not enough eyes on golf i guess there's still money in golf but yeah um so that leads me to before we get into the safe way i kind of want to talk about a, a small preview of this 2021 season i guess that we're going to have we're going to have 50 events uh concluding with again the tour championship right around labor day next year uh, but this year's a little different. Uh, Token, we get six majors. Yeah, that, that I mean, it, it's not a Grand Slam this year. What is it, the Super Slam? Yeah, Grand Slam yeah. double. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, one player has a chance to win six majors possibly in this season. Very unlikely to happen. But No, yeah, of course. Saying uh, there's a chance. Tony, the one thing I was kind of curious about is, are these majors, these extra two, the – uh, additional U.S. Open and the and the additional um, Masters, are they going to attribute to this year's scores, like this year's FedEx points and things like that? Uh, yeah. So they they will for the for this yes the upcoming season they will yes. So they will have there's going to be a lot of FedEx points um, this year because you not only have those two added, but there are a couple of other of the events, the one in Puerto Rico and then. Uh, Bermuda, I think, that are going to be actual full-on events, uh, full field events, and they will carry uh, essentially double the points than they normally would. So, yeah, you're going to have a lot of, uh, of opportunities to get points. I think there's a total of five or six more tournaments than there usually is for a season. So, yep, they will all garner points. Um, so, yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a fun-filled year as, uh, for the FedEx Cup race uh, down the stretch. There's, there certainly won't be any excuses to be made uh, if you don't get, you know, get in the top 125 because there's a lot of opportunities this year. Well, I guess token patience was a virtue. We, we missed golf for about three months, two, three months, and, but we were rewarded with even more golf coming up in this season. I, I think, uh, I think you know, like Tony said, you know, more events, bigger fields, more competitive fields can only be better for not only the gambling community, but just the golf watching community as well. Absolutely. I mean, plenty of golf this season to come, and ho- hopefully it's a full slate of tournaments. Yeah, I think my only complaint with golf at this point in time is now here in Las Vegas, the weather's getting cooler and the, and the price is getting higher. But other than that, I love everything about golf going right now. But yeah. 
Uh, and okay. the aerated greens. <laughs> yeah, a lot of places are closing for their aeration right now. Um, so let's kind of talk about this. Uh, I think I know who you guys are going to pick, but I'm, I'm, I just want to I want to throw this question out here for you guys and the listeners. Uh, Token, I'll start with you. Uh, in this 2021 season, the super season, as we'll call it, uh, which player do you think is poised to kind of break out and become, I don't want to say the Dustin Johnson, because that might be shooting a little too high, but poised to become potentially even the next FedEx Cup champion and have a great year in 2021? Uh, if I had to pick one golfer and only one golfer, it's not going to be Schwartz, however. I think I, I'm going to write, actually, you know what? I'm going to write my, <laughs> who I think it is down. <laughs> I, I, I think you might know who I'm thinking, and that person. Are you ready? Yep. Alex Norn. Oh, I didn't oh, get. I didn't wow. get it right. Oh, come on. Did you see how I, I was. I, I I think he's on the up and up. I picked the answer. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> that was it. Yes. Absolutely. But fair enough. I I think he'll have a great year, but I mean, I I think Norn will have a breakout season. He's been playing a lot more of these style links now. And. I mean, yeah, he's been getting more accustomed to the American golf, and he's been playing pretty well, despite the only any time I put action on him, it doesn't go. He's like the Jay Cutler of golf betting for me at this point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so Tony, uh, same question. I've written my answer down. Sure. So you want me to predict the FedEx Cup winner? Is that is that yeah, just or, who you who you think's prime to maybe be have a successful year? And you know, if it ends in a FedEx Cup championship, then yeah, so be it. Yeah, I mean, I. I if I had to pick a guy, especially with how well he plays on the course, and it is going to still stay at Eastlake um, this upcoming season, and he almost came back and won uh, the thing and had a shot towards the end. But, uh, you know, I would probably go with Xander Shoffley. Um, <laughs> if I had to, <laughs> I knew, I knew you'd get that one. I think it'll be uh, – I just think he's just, re you know, really primed and has been for a long time now. You know, he finished, again, tied for second, essentially, um, and didn't win a tournament. Um, that is extremely rare in, in FedEx Cup uh, uh, time here in this last 15 years. It's only happened, I think, uh, two or three times total. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it, it shows the consistency. Um, you know, he's a force to be reckoned with at every course he plays. Um, I just want to say one other thing. I think we should look out for Patrick Cantley as well. Uh, kind of limped into the end of the season, so he might be forgotten a little bit, um, I would think. But a guy that's got a really big game, a uh, really smart, um, even-keeled guy uh, who's just been getting better and better as the years have gone on. And I think we could see a very strong season from him as well. Yeah, Patrick Cantley has been a name that you and many others, uh, you know, in the DFS and betting world have brought up. Uh, you're right. He just really couldn't put it all together this year. Right. I don't know if the layoff – because he was playing well before the layoff. So I don't he know was. if the layoff really kind of yeah. hindered him, which, you know, all of us thought, you know, the layoff can only be good for these guys. But that doesn't necessarily ring true for every single golfer on the tour. You know, some guys thrive on momentum and rhythm and consistency. And, you know, sure. two, three-month breaks, just that's the antithesis of it <laughs> at that Absolutely. point. So. All right, the last kind of preview I want to talk about here of this season is, and it's been around for, you know, a while now, obviously, is the Tiger Watch. Uh, you know, at some point, we believe he's going to win a tournament and take sole possession of first place on the all-time tournament wins record. Uh, Token, do you, do you see a spot this year? Uh, I mean, I'll take this one out. You can't have Augusta. But do you see a spot this year where he could actually win a tournament? And it doesn't have to be a major. Just be anywhere on tour in 21 and 20 and 21 that he could actually overtake this wins record i would think it'd have to be like a bigger event and all that and the one, first one that comes to my mind is the players possibly i know he does typically pretty well at sawgrass but i i just don't see him getting a victory this year hey tony what do you think I'm in, I'm in total agreement. Um, I don't think he'll win this year either. I think this last win is going to be pretty tough. Doesn't mean he won't sneak one in over the next two, three, four years or however long he can really, I think, play golf at a, a reasonably high enough level. But um, if I had to choose one, I would choose the Farmers, I think, just as his record there, how comfortable he is uh, on that golf course, you know, playing there so much as a kid. Finds, uh, yeah. yeah, so yeah. That, that would be the one I would pick. Um, any place with probably, you know, Bermuda, uh, you know, greens is probably more ideal. You know, he just has not put well on, on POA greens at all, you know, well at all in the last, what, at least six, seven years. He's been brutal uh, on mm -hmm. those greens. If you really look at the stats, I mean, uh, you know, to be honest. So, um, yeah, that would be my pick. But I think I'm a token. I, I don't see a win here. There's just too many really quality young players that are – that don't fade down the stretch. You know, these, these guys don't give away a lot of shots. It's tough. It's tough to win. Yeah, I, I have – 
I have a question for you guys. Which do you think is more likely, Woods passing Snead or Mickelson passing Hagen this year? How many does Mickelson need? Does he have like 45? Uh, two. Uh, he's got uh, 44 and Hagen has 45. Uh, I think Woods is just to, just to have to win one, I think is, is, is probably yeah. the easier task. And he's got Torrey Pines twice on the card this year. True. Uh, with the Farmers True. and the U.S. Open. So. Good point. Good point. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. On top um, of having Augusta twice. I know I took that out of the equation, but on top of having Augusta twice, I mean, there's four good shots yeah. At, yeah, good point. Uh, at really taking that victory and, and becoming the sole possession leader of wins uh, with, I believe, 83 at that point. Yeah. I would go the other way, in my opinion. I think I would take Mickelson winning two. I wow. still bet. Yeah. Two wow. PGA Tour events this year. Wow. I mean, okay. who's the favorite coming into this week? So, uh, w- one this week only needs one more. I'll, <laughs> just because he's can't. the favorite here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'll, I'll take a year-long bet on the under at one and a half wins. Okay. How much? I don't know, 20 bucks. Okay, that's fair. We should have jobs by then. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Anyways, uh, all right, so the Safeway Open. Uh, again, first one on the docket here. We have new year of golf, even though we played last week, but we have a new theoretical year of golf here. Uh, DJ, obviously, and some of the other big names are going to take uh, this week off, as evidenced by, you said, Phil Mickelson at 20-1 to 1 is the favorites, the betting favorite that's not named Field, all others. Um, at this point. So as we do every week, we are going to open up with a course outline here. Uh, again, we're in wine country at the Silverado Country Club. So Tony, take us on a nice auditory trip down to, to wine country here in the Silverado Country Club. Will do. I'm, I'm not sure if I can follow up last week's because I, re- I re-listened to last week's one and I, I, I can't believe how much I put it packed in in about three <laughs> minutes. But um, you know, it is a beautiful course uh, and a great setting, and I think a really, really nice place to start, you know, for the first uh, um, tournament of the year. they It was the third tournament of the year last year to start the new season. Um, they went away from it um, leading off, and I think it's a great time to lead off because, as you said, it's just a nice, calm part of the country that's, I think, uh, really conducive to uh, to starting out here. So 156-player uh, field, so you get the normal uh, uh, large-scale field. Many of the players in the U.S. Open will find um, uh, for, uh, that's being played next week are not in this field. So we weren't sure with some of these kind of fringe players whether they would want to play a competitive round of golf uh, or rounds of golf or not. Most, the great majority, have chosen not to do so. So that's sort of interesting and something we'll, we'll be looking at um, you know, going forward into next week. Uh, but the course itself, uh, Silverado Country Club, uh, resort uh, style property, um, par 72, 7,166 yards. So on the shorter side for four, uh, for a four par five golf course. Um, but the, the difficulty here, um, is actually right in those par fives. Uh, these four par fives play about as difficult as, as a collection of par fives do, uh, for a regular tour stop. Um, and, and the reason for that is not being able to get there in two. Uh, it's, it's very, very difficult with the way uh, the course uh, meanders through the trees and, um, and spots that you have to hit. It's just very difficult to get the ball there in two. So uh, uh, old school Robert Trent Jones Jr. Uh, design that was redesigned by Johnny Miller to basically for the tour to try to make it more difficult. And he's done a really excellent job uh, about it. And, um, you know, the toughest part, uh, as we talked about, not just, you know, getting at those par fives, but it's just hitting fairways in general. Uh, field only hitting about 50% of fairways out here, and it's only because of how narrow they are. You know, we watched East Lake last week, about 25 yards of width for most of those uh, those holes, 24 yards of width on average out here at Silverado. So just going to be difficult to hit fairways. Um, difference uh, from last week, though, to this week, uh, you know, well, one of them, I guess, uh, will be that rough is is not a Bermuda rough. So just a regular uh, rye uh, Kentucky bluegrass rough cut to about three inches, two and a half to three inches, so not too bad. We saw Cameron Champ last year, uh, your winner, hit less than 50% of the fairways, I believe, going on to victory. So it's very doable to, m- to miss fairways here and still uh, still get it going. Uh, greens will run at about 11.5 on the stint meter, so about tour average. Um, and they are full-on POA greens. So we'll be looking for players specifically that putt well on those greens uh, or players that specifically don't putt well on greens like this. You know, they can use that to our advantage as well. About 6,200 square feet on average uh, for the greens. So um, 
Wind can be a factor here, but it won't be too bad this week. 10 to 15 miles an hour. Looks like Thursday through Sunday in the afternoon, but in the mornings, it's a little bit chillier, but no wind. So the scoring times will be in the a.m. for the most part here. And uh, as, I, as I said a little bit uh, earlier here, looking for players specifically that hit the ball a pretty long distance because, again, we're not worried about hitting fairways or being all that accurate. We want to see guys that can move the ball left to right and right to left as well because there's going to be dog legs going both ways here. Guys that can move the golf ball I think are really, really important here. This, it would be a great course for a guy like Bubba Watson if he played out here. It really, I think, would fit extremely well for him. Um, but, um, yeah, so, I mean, that's pretty much it. The one thing I do want to note is that scrambling we tend to kind of not focus on in a lot of these places. Really important out here. Really, really important. Um, they shave off a lot of spots right around greens. And so you're going to see guys miss greens barely and have it roll off into a collection area. And that's where the great scramblers uh, do their best work. So we're going to want to see some of the better scramblers. And um, that's pretty much where we're at for this week. Uh, it's, it's a good tournament. Uh, you can score. You can, go, you can go low. But it is not the easiest bomb and gouge type of track we'll see. I think we'll see some real the guys that are really playing well we'll be able to find out this week because you, you'll get punished uh if you don't hit uh, good shots and these greens are tough undulating very tough greens so it's a true test should we expect any hiccups or anything um like that from these wildfires that are currently burning in california so I've heard that it's pretty hazy uh, out there, and it's really not all that clear. Um, the players have commented on it, and I've seen you know some of the Twitter uh, uh, spots from the people that are working the the event that it's just not very clear. So it's a great question you bring up. I've been thinking about it myself. I'm not sure how we can necessarily handicap it. Um, I've tried to rack my brain to figure it out. Um, you know, the players are just saying we just kind of kind of play through it, and yeah, I just didn't know if ball flight distance how those will be affected by. Nothing I've heard. I don't know. I, I actually, I don't know. Uh, nothing I know of it. The ball doesn't travel the furthest out here. This is pretty much um, at standard elevation. I think they're about 500 feet above sea level, but it's a little bit cooler and there's a marine layer. So um, I, I hear that it, it doesn't go as far just in general, but I don't know how the wildfires will affect it. It's a great question. Yeah, because I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you guys have been outside in the last couple of days. It looks like end of days here in Vegas from the smoke yeah. that's just blown over from California. So sure does. I, I know that uh, you know Napa's not too far away from where these things have been raging on over a gender reveal party. <laughs> when I found out why there's wildfires, that's yeah. amazing. That's incredible. Amazing. Yeah. Yep. So America. Uh, anyways, it. all right. So let's get into the betting here. The beginning tournament of the 2020 2021 season. We're going to start with the futures as we do pretty much every time. Again, like you said before, Token Tony said Phil Mickelson is the betting favorite of anyone not named Field. Uh, at 20 to 1, there's three guys at 20 to 1 there. So we're going to start with you, Token, at the favorites clump. We're going to start with you at Phil Mickelson all the way down to uh, Burns at 40 to 1. Uh, so give me your favorites. Give me a couple guys you have or one guy you have here in the favorite clump. And I've got one I really like on this list who is uh... – Grillo, I, I like him at the value of 30 to 1. Uh, kind of tip of the cap to Strillman, but I'm going to lay off of him right now just because he's been playing too much golf. I think he's going to be kind of burned out. And then one I also see a decent amount of value on, on in the slugger field is uh, Burns. He's probably one of the longest hitters of the whole field yeah, same coming Burns. into this. So, yeah, it's going to make a big factor, I'm sure – with a lot of his shots. So, uh, as right now, I only have the grill a little bit. There you go. That's my guy. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, you know, I, I only have one bet in this uh, clump as well. Um, and uh, that bet comes in weirdly enough. I don't think I bet on him in maybe a couple of years. Uh, Sergio Garcia here at 30 to 1. I think he's the best player in this field. So, I, I, I kind of figured out, in my opinion, certainly just my opinion, that he's the best player in this field. So and he's not being treated that way. You know, 30 to 1 here, uh, I think it's a very fair number. If you look around uh, uh, the globe, 30 is about as good as you're going to get. So it's nice to see that uh, at a bunch of places out here. And, um, you know, the nice thing about Sergio, not just the quality ball striking, we know about that. That's, that's, that's no doubt uh, there. But he's not, he's not the best at hitting fairways. So I like being able to spray it a little bit. But he can work the ball to both ways. Um, his best surface putting 
The key here is POA uh, by far. So he's about a shot and a half better on POA than he is at, uh, at either of the other surfaces uh, throughout his tour career. So, and that has almost exacerbated, I think, even more so uh, these last few years. So I think that's really nice. Um, we, all we need is a decent punting week from Sergio because if, if his ball striking is absolutely A-plus on point, he won't need to make a lot of putts. We saw that with Cameron Champ last year. It's a great example. He was about middle of the road, uh, middle of the field and putting. Uh, and he won the tournament. So I really like Sergio here. I'm not sure where his head's at. I really have no idea uh, at all. So, uh, you know, he might burn out. But um, if he's there to play, uh, 30, I think, is a good number. And I'm intrigued by Doc Redman here at 35. Um, you know, uh, we've liked Doc. I know we've mentioned him a couple of different times on here. But usually we're mentioning him when he's 70, 80 to 1. You know, you feel like you're getting something. You know, I guess the quality of this field is a little bit worse. Um, it's almost getting to that point, though, because Doc just keeps hitting leaderboards, you know, week after week when he's in the field that 35 is becoming more reasonable. Again, I, I don't think I'm going to bet it at this number. I just I won't be surprised if he's competing again and in the top 10 or close by. So just wanted to make a note of him or the old tip of the cap, as uh, Token likes to say. But I don't think I can get there in this number, but I'm certainly very intrigued. Yeah, I looked at a couple guys in this in this spot. Uh, I'm surprised. I know that this value is probably not good enough for you, Token, but I'm surprised you didn't take a look at Siwoo and give him an old tip of the cap, as you like to say. He, he does play aggressive, but one thing I don't like about him coming into this course is his length. He kind of struggles with that slightly. So, Yeah, and I 100% and I agree with you on the Streelman uh, thought as well, too, because he has played a lot of golf, has played a lot of good golf. This would be a spot maybe that you could see some regression at that point. So, yep. um, all right, we'll move into the middle tier here, starting with Keegan Bradley, who is currently lined up at 50 to one here on William Hill, Nevada, uh, all the way down to uh, a favorite of the show, JB Holmes at 95 to one. <laughs> so the middle tier here of guys, you have guys in there like, again, Keegan Bradley, Maverick McNeely, Cameron Tringali, Jim Furyk, Token's boy Schwartzel. And again, you have a couple other guys here uh, all the way uh, down to, a guy I like in this spot, uh, I don't really know if he can, you know, win the whole thing, but to be able to maybe compete and find a spot to maybe have him, uh, I like Wesley Bryan at 90 to 1. Maybe that's just I like watching his YouTube videos, but that's just me. Uh, but Token, who do you have in this, uh, in this middle tier of guys from Bradley to Holmes? Uh, I only have one in this list, but I mean, tip the cap to Wesley Bryan for sure. I mean, he, he does put on some good videos. Uh, and you had mentioned him, though, in, when you were listening off in this group, is uh, Maverick McNeely, actually. Tip of the cap to Maverick McNeely. Especially with... <laughs> no, no, it's actually one that I have a bet That's... on. Uh, oh, there you go. Oh, okay. Tip of two yeah. caps. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, no, I mean, he's, he's from the area, uh, certainly. We know about that, you know, his dad being a Silicon Valley um, executive and uh, going to Stanford. Um, this was the first tournament he played in um, as an amateur. I know he got a, a sponsor's exemption. What, that was probably, what, three or four years ago at least uh, now. And um, he's comfortable out here. He, he not only played in that sponsor's ex exemption, but he's played out here quite a few times. So Maverick makes some sense, uh, starting to get it, get it together a little bit. Uh, if he could putt like his lady friend uh, out here in Las Vegas, he would oh, be, yeah. yeah, I mean, it would be, it'd be top 10 almost every week. Almost. I know. And he's supposed to be a great putter too. And that's the, usually, you know, what he's been like, but his putting has actually failed him kind of weirdly enough the, uh, the second half of the season. So very strange in that regard, but certainly a guy that in a spot that I think makes some sense. And I have him marked as well. Token. I haven't fired it yet. I'm glad you have, but um, yeah, I'm intrigued. Certainly. Uh, the one guy I have fired is Carlos Ortiz here at 75 to one. Uh, a guy that lurks quite often, um, but does it very quietly. Um, he's, uh, he's not a flashy guy. He doesn't actually hit the ball a ton. Um, he was only about 35th or uh, 36th, I think, in driving distance. But, you know, that's still pretty long uh, nowadays. That's still, uh, you know, just about 300 yards um, off the tee. And uh, he's very quietly puts it together. When he does put it together, it's usually on Poa Anna courses. Um, he's another guy that's about a stroke better. Uh, on POA greens. I didn't realize this until I looked, looked it up this week uh, than he is on, on, in other spots. So uh, quietly been playing a little bit better. Um, you know, got into the FedEx Cup this year, uh, this year but just couldn't really move, um, you know, all, all that far. Uh, but had a really nice first half of the season last year. Really got started here actually pretty well last year. So I like Carlos Ortiz at 75. And um, I was intrigued by Patrick Rogers at 65. Another guy, Stanford, uh, Stanford dude, uh, Californian. Um, just wasn't sure if that number was good enough. It was close. He's the last guy out, you know, if you will, you know, like those, you know, NCAA tournament shows are, he's my last guy out right now. I just, uh, I couldn't get enough. I, I want something like 70 
Um, but uh, just a smidge more. Yes. Yes. All right, and uh, let's move into the long shots here. Uh, first guy I see on the list is Pat Perez at 100 to one. So token, <clears throat> we'll go long shots here. Triple digit guys, Pat Perez and beyond. This might be a spot where you do find somebody. Yeah, and uh, I have two on this list, and uh, honorable uh, honorable mention for sure. Uh, first guy is uh, Nate Lashley at 150 to one. Pretty reasonable off the tee. Decent with the long irons and all that. Another one that I don't have, but I'm leaning towards is Luke Donald at 201. And then my last one that I'm considering betting and most likely will fire on is Camilo uh, Vajigas at 301. Yeah, Camilo is interesting, you know, coming, uh, basically coming back, um, you know, after the death of his daughter. Um, I know he played, I guess, on the Corn Ferry once, I believe, or uh, another one of the smaller tours, but this will be his first time back. So, so that should be interesting to see how he fares. Um, you know, 300 to one, I'm not really sure what to make of that. I saw him uh, on the list. I wasn't sure if anybody would bite on that, but uh, yeah, that'll be really interesting. Um, you know, four out of the last six years, uh, player over 100 to one has won this tournament. Um, so it does seem like kind of a spot where you can get a get a number. I just haven't really found any guys that I like, you know, in any numbers that make a whole lot of sense. Um, I only have one bet that I've actually outright made, and that's Austin Cook. Uh, I ha- had Austin Cook four or five weeks ago. I remember right around this number. We got him at 150 uh, out here at Westgate. Uh, he's 125 here on your dial at uh, at William Hill, and um, I just. I think Austin Cook's a guy that he's so streaky and so kind of crazy and will be very, very, very aggressive on the course that I just want to have him in a light field. I don't think it can ever take him in a really strong field, but in a light field, in a triple digit type of uh, type of spot where you can really go after a golf course, if you're on your game, um, he's not, not necessarily uh, the best putter in the world, but his short game is phenomenal. He is a great uh, pitcher and chipper of the golf ball. Um, he's been in the top 20 in that category, uh, three of the last four years, uh, on tour. So, you know, if he gets it going, uh, ball striking wise, I, he's a guy I like here. So I, that is my third and final wager that I've made, um, at least as, uh, Austin cook it at 150 to one. Very nice. Yeah. One thing I've noticed, um, so far looking around the betting, you know, lineup here that we have, uh, you got a big mix of guys in the future bets again. You know, nobody really feels comfortable having Phil Mickelson as a favorite right now, despite the fact that Token thinks that this is one of the two wins that he's going to have this year, <laughs> but didn't take him. <laughs> That's um, true. That's true. Uh, yes. So looking at this, I don't know if because a lot of the, the big names are taking the break that the sports books decided to take a break as well. But the matchup offerings, the prop offerings are real limited this week. I was curious to see, like, what was out there. And there's not a ton. I know, Token, you told me before the show that you didn't have any. So, uh, Tony Johnson, I'm going to look to you. I know you said you had a few. So, this week's matchups, um, it's, it's, let's see what you got. Absolutely. Yeah, I just have a couple here. Um, and I'm just kind of rolling along with what I think what guys will do best. So, uh, first one is uh, Bud Cauley over Luke List. Um, he is unfortunately a, a pretty distinct favorite here at minus 125. Uh, I just don't like this fit at all for Luke List. I think this is a really, really tough spot. He's really bad around the greens, and that that will bite you uh, on this course, I think, really, really badly. Yeah, he can spray it a little bit off the tee, and that's all good and well, and he's very long. Um, but he just it, it's just not a good scoring course for him, uh, I, I don't think at all. And, uh, and the opposite is true with Bud Cauley. Bud Cauley is a short game extraordinaire. Um, and always keeps it together uh, on the golf course. So there, th- this is a tournament where we've had a lot like Luke, with Luke List where he has one bad round uh, each week, and that one bad round will cost him against a player like Bud Cauley who just does not fire big numbers. So, um, you know, uh, hopefully we get all four rounds here. Hopefully we, you know, we don't get really unlucky and Bud misses the cut for some reason. But if we can get all four rounds, uh, I love the spot here. And the second one I like is really weird because I don't, you know, bet against Spieth, you know, in a lot of spots like this. But I got, I got Sergio Garcia over Spieth. Um, this line moved already a little bit too, which was nice. Uh, opened at plus 105 um, on William Hill. And he's now down to minus 105, which is good. Uh, over Spieth, and, and I just think they have the wrong favorite. Uh, I think Sergio should absolutely be the favorite here uh, in this spot. Um, it's just, you know, a perfect spot uh, for him. I think the game fits the best, and um, it's a spot I want to be on with it. You know, to have a guy like this, this great of a player as an underdog, um, 
you know, in the spot I think is, I think is legit. So there's a couple I'm also intrigued by, uh, you know, I can throw those out there. I'm intrigued uh, by Brendan Steele, uh, who's now actually moved up to, he was minus 115 against Joel Damon. So maybe I should have bet earlier. He's now minus 125 uh, here at Whale Hill. Uh, Brendan Steele from the area uh, has won this tournament twice before to back to back years, a uh, few years back and, um, and loves it, loves it out here. Uh, he's actually got uh a second home here and spends almost as much as time here as he does in his regular house, uh, is what he said, uh, in Florida, cause he loves it so much. So, uh, that one I'm intrigued by. And then, uh, Carlos Ortiz plus one Oh five over Jim Furyk. Haven't bet that one. It's just, you know, betting against Jim Furyk can be so infuriating because he just is always in the fairway. You know, he's always hitting greens and it's just hard to gain a lot of shots on a guy like that. Again, I think the course fit is terrible for Fury because you can spray it a little bit. And I think it's great, uh, you know, being a longer hitter, but uh, just a tough guy to bet against. So I'm still thinking about it, especially that plus 105 is nice, but I uh, haven't fired on it yet. All right, fair enough. Yeah, light matchup week. Um, it's not a lot of offerings out there. I don't know what you guys saw. Like you said, with the, the William Hill, there wasn't a ton going on out there. And maybe that's just their... I don't know if it's inability to handicap it or just don't want to handicap it because they don't know the handle. I'm curious to see what the handle this week would be after would we have three straight months of huge, you know, unprecedented handles yeah. in, in golf. So I'm curious. It was a weird week. It was a weird week because we finished on Monday too, I think. So they're yeah. kind of maybe a little bit behind as well. So yeah. It could be. Yeah. You could be right on that one. So, all right. As we do every week of the previous season, <laughs> we're going to have a daily fantasy lineup for courtesy oh, of nice. Tony Token. Tony Absolutely. Token. Token Tony. <laughs> I'm dyslexic today. So Token, as we do every week, it is the Yahoo Daily Fantasy lineup. You have a $200 budget, six golfers, fire away. Yeah, and uh, first up on this list, I'm going to start out with uh, Kevin Streelman for uh, $37. Uh, another one for 37 is Siwoo. I am going to take him mm-hmm. fancy, but however. Ah, oh, there he is. We yeah. knew we'd get Siwoo at some point. Yeah. You can't stay away from the guy. Nope. No, no avoiding him. I, I, I think he'll have a decent week, make the cut, perform pretty well. Borderline top 20 or so. So still pretty solid take. Uh, Maverick McNeely, I, I think I really like him for sure. It should be probably top 10 in my opinion very familiar with this course and all that uh moving on down we got henrik nor norlander for 32 dollars we got emiliano grillo for 31 and wow, he's, he's less than norlander that's surprising yeah wow. yeah it, nice. I, I saw grillo at that value and i just got him in him there up. yeah and i think he'll have a light uh percentage of uh followers this week for sure and then last on that list to round it off, we got CT Pan. Oh, wow. CT, okay. For 26. Yep. A so little, little international $3. diversity. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Three, $3 budget left over. The bottom feeders. <laughs> now, Tony, correct me if I'm wrong, Tony Johnson. This man said that Phil Mickelson was winning this tournament, yet he has not placed one any kind of wager on him. <laughs> Frustrating to listen to, isn't it? Very frustrating. Yes, uh, I was waiting for something Phil regarded, uh, especially because I'm I'm relatively anti Phil in the sense that uh, I don't think he's going to win either. Um, I don't think he's going to win ever again on the PGA Tour. Um, yeah, I know it's a. I don't bold... feel like making a bet that long term. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand, and I just I. I j- I'm not saying he's not trying to win. Obviously, of course he is. And his game is in actually a pretty good spot right now. I can't deny that. It's just he's he does not have that same intensity. And he does not have that same – I can't fathom it being that same 100% desire and practice regiment that he had when he was 30 years old that he has now when he's 50. It's just, it just doesn't seem like it would be feasible. And then – add to that the fact that we have all of these great young players uh, and I think it's just going to be very very difficult can he compete yes I think he can compete um he won't it's embarrass the same himself. as winning yes I not agree. the same as winning so um I'm shocked his number was at 20 like I'm beyond Me too. beyond shocked I, I, th- I thought he'd be near the top near one of the favorites so that wasn't surprising but it's like did they count the win on the champions tour you know for you know uh, for a Maybe. lot I, I guess I thought he'd be in the 40 to 50 to one range. And then one of us was going to pluck him at that. And just, you know, maybe we can get, we can get a number there and fine. I, you know, I get that. I'm, I'm shocked. He's 20. So that was my only point I wanted to make about Phil the entire time was that he's 20 to one is nuts. I think. 
My own purse. But. Yeah, I could actually end up with a nice middle here if you want to make a bet. I could take the under on one and a half wins and the over on one win. Or the over, <laughs> on half a win. over on half a win for you. I just have yeah. a nice middle there. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I just I can't imagine him winning another tournament. Um, I mean, it's po- obviously it's possible. He just did it like two years ago, but I don't know. I go for 20 bucks. I can go, I can have a $40 year or no year. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I'll, uh, you know what? I'll, that's fine. I'll take, I'll take the raw under the number. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah. So a half, I'll take Just the half, under, yeah. half. One win for Mickelson this year makes me a $40 millionaire. So. And that's through the, uh, through the tour championship, correct? <laughs> through the tour championship. Beautiful. Okay. All right. There you go. Good stuff. <laughs> I literally can't lose. It's a free roll. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well done. He, he well wins done. one, you bink. If he that's wins great. zero, then it pays for itself. You pay him, and if he wins two, he pays you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's it. So there you go. Okay, fair enough. All right, let's move on to the other tour. Speaking of <laughs> Phil's champion tour win, uh, there are other tours. LPGA and champions are, are getting underway this week as well. Um, so I know you guys have some action here. Uh, Token, I know you have some champions and the ladies. So let's hear what you got. Yeah, I'm going to start with the champions first. Uh, one guy that's been playing probably best golf on this tour is uh, Bernard Langer, even though value isn't the best here, but I, he's definitely not the favorite odds wise, but 10 to one, I still see value. So, and then for, go ahead, go ahead, yep, Tony. Keep going. no, no, keep going. I was just going to say, I don't have any champions. I want to yeah, make okay. sure you knew that. Okay, good. Yeah. Keep yeah. going, please. And then for the LPJ as of right now, I'm looking towards Ellie McDonald at 70 to one and Ann Van Dam at 100 to one. Oh, you love Ann. That's that's one of it's one of your ladies. Yes. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Good stuff. Um, yeah, I haven't had a chance to get. I'm. I'll I'll blame it on. Uh, I'll be like the sports books. I don't think I've had a chance to 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 catch up here. I haven't even had a, uh, looked at the champions uh, situation. I really do want to handicap it though. So looking forward to that, and I'll remember uh, who you have there, uh, Token. Uh, what your picks were. Uh, with with longer but um yeah the lpga it's a it's a major you know we got another major uh week here for them and this is this is one of the pure majors uh on this tour you know they've had a lot of majors kind of go in and out you know add and subtract um this one is a big one um uh, which is now called the ANA Inspiration, used to be the Kraft Nabisco, McDonald's, what have you. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pure shot maker's venue out there in Rancho Mirage, California in the desert. Uh, beautiful course, great spot. Uh, I've been there, I haven't played the course, uh, but I have been on the property. It's a, it's a great place. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is, this is the type of event that we see, you know, the, uh, the master's type of event, like, you know, on, uh, for the PGA guys, you know, really, you end up seeing the really pure shot makers uh, usually come away with that. Sometimes, you know, the putter, you know, putters can, can come through, but uh, yeah. So with that, um, you know, I have a couple of picks here. Uh, I've got Lydia Ko at 25 to one um, picked her up right away, right when she opened at Westgate. Uh, so that was pretty nice. I know she's come down, I think on a couple of spots. I'm not sure if she's coming down out there, but uh, Lydia Ko at 25. Um, the second one, uh, uh, that we were there is, I'm sorry, where did she go? I lost her. There we go. Brittany Altamir at 45 to one, uh, Brittany, uh, had a rough week a couple of weeks ago in, in the, uh, past tournament, a tournament that she's got a great record in actually. Um, but, uh, made a couple of big holes, got a couple of big doubles, um, in their first round that was really never able to recover because it was such a shootout that even getting to three or four under par didn't even actually make the cut. I think she got to three and didn't make the cut. So, um, you know, Brittany still, I think, you know, right on point, um, has finally come into her own on tour. And, and I think it's a good spot there at 45 to one. And then my third and final pick is a little bit, I'll admit a little bit on the, uh, on the outskirts, but uh, she played extremely well out in Scotland and um, actually won last year on the tour down in Houston. That's Cheyenne Knight, a uh, young player just out of college a couple of years, um, plays very fearless golf um, and takes a lot of chances and a lot of risk. And that type of play is needed on this course. Now, if you don't hit good shots, uh, you'll, you'll find a lot of water. You'll find a lot of really bad spots. You'll find some desert lies that are bad and, you know, she can certainly miss a cut, but a spot like this at 125 to one, um, with Cheyenne Knight, I, I, I want somebody that's going to put, keep their foot on the gas and then uh, she's one of them. So those are the three bets I have. I'll, I'll probably even have a few more, uh, but I, when all is said and done, I really like this term and I feel like I got a good grasp of it. Uh, but those are the three I have, uh, so far. All right. Fair enough. Sounds great. We got a full wide range of golf action this week. Uh, and on top of that, before we wrap up the show here, I want to discuss this. It is the NFL coming up tomorrow. 
Thursday, September, September 10th, we got the Chiefs, the reigning Super Bowl champions, facing off against the Texans. Now, over the last couple of weeks, Tony Johnson and I have butted heads on the Texans. Uh, <laughs> but it doesn't fun. matter. Now we're yeah. going to get games on the field here at this Absolutely. point. Uh, so we're going to wrap up, kind of giving our picks with this one. Uh, the start of the season, again, 8-15 eight, eight, uh, Eastern. Houston and Kansas City, first game of the season, no fans, Super Bowl champs, already got their rings, don't have to worry about all that. The total is 54 and a half. Kansas City is a nine-point favorite now at the Westgate, has come down from opening at 10. Tony Johnson, your initial thoughts on this game, and let's give us a pick for this game. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be sort of how I'm handicapping the season a little bit here. Uh, I actually don't bet – um, in week one, um, I started stop. I started not betting week one last year just because it's the tightest week uh, by far because lines have been bet into now for two or three months, and it's it's just a spot that I I, I don't really want to participate in. Um, so again, uh, I'll handicap this game just based on how I'm handicap these teams, and I think this is a this is really one way traffic in, in every regard. I'm not even sure that Houston's defense is going to be as good as Kansas City's defense this year, and I think that's really saying something because Kansas City's defense is going to be, you know, middle of the pack at best, uh, really, especially with how often they might have to be on the field if they, you know, based on how quickly that offense can score. That, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just, I can't fathom this game not really going one direction. And I'm not a guy, as you know, to lay a lot of points uh, very often, but I think Kansas City will score uh, quickly and early. And I'm just not sure that Houston has enough uh, to come back here. So um, I'm going to go with uh, Kansas City winning this game by 20 points. Um, in regards to the total, I think it's a pretty good number. Uh, I think it's a, it's a really, really good number, uh, especially with Houston um, uh, far behind late and probably getting maybe a couple of garbage scores. Um, I'll take the over. How about that? Uh, I'll be the, the true on guy here, the favorite in the over just to get it started. But uh, I'll go with Kansas City. Kansas City laying the points is really where I want to be, though, if I had to be, be at a spot. You got to unmute, Token. In my opinion, I, I mean, it was very well said, Tony. And I'm on the same sides, but I'd be flip-flop. I lean towards more of the over first, and then the KC side second. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, I was just saying, like, wait, he took the over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, gotcha. same, same bets, but my first bet would be more of the over, in my opinion. I mean, I, I did see it go down to 53 and a half for a split second. What was it? Oh, uh, really? Where? Yeah, it was uh, – <laughs> Wow. Saturday. But I, I still oh, wow. even like it at 54, 54 and a half. So I, I, I see them putting up about almost 75, 80 points total in this game. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. So you've, you're going to make the bet then? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Nice. Okay. Wow. That's bold. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I see like a 45, 30 kind of game. Wow. Well, as a more recreational better myself, I tend to agree with you. I like the favorite in the over, as every square does. Um, <laughs> but I'm also scared money, so I'll pay a little bit more juice. I'm going to take a seven-point teaser here, there take Kansas City down to two, and take the 47 over. Also have this in the 14-point teaser, which you can catch on our Twitter. I will tweet it out uh, Thursday <laughs> on Vegas Squares, uh, on our Twitter handle, at Vegas Squares. You can check that out. I'll have the 14-point teaser for you in because – Kansas City is a part of that 14-point teaser. So, again, Why not? I'll take the seven-point teaser. Kansas City by two and 50 – actually, be 47 and a half. I'll take the over on that as well. I, I think – yeah, I think we're looking at the fact that Kansas City – this might not sound like as bold of a prediction as I thought it would, but I think Kansas City might be able to touch the over by itself. Yeah. No, I, that wouldn't be shocking. I, I'm, that wouldn't be – I mean, I could see Kansas shocking. City putting up 42 yep. – you know, 41, yep. 42 points here in this spot like this. Yeah. So. And just because it's square, you know, uh, favored and over doesn't mean that it's not right. It's you not know, always the, wrong, yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Sometimes that's the right side to be on. There's nothing wrong with that, for, for sure. Well, like we said, life's too short to bet the under sometimes, right? <laughs> there you go. That's what my mug says. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, all right, that's it for us here on the Vegas Squares Golf Betting Podcast. You even got an extra free football pick, no charge. Uh, I want to thank the sponsors, 12 Ounce Sports uh, Network and Zingo TV who, for putting us on. You can catch us on Zingo, Channel 761, every Wednesday at 4 p.m. with a replay at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, and Saturdays at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, we're going to now have football picks. We're going to do our Super Contest football picks on that, on that uh, episode as well. 
Uh, it will replay on Sundays at 10 p.m. Obviously, the picks will not be topical by then unless you have the Monday night game. If you want to sign up for a brand new account with Zingo TV, use the promo code 120Z and it is completely 100% free. I want to thank the rest of the sponsors, uh, Vice Golf, Fanatics, Pro-Am Customs, DC4L Custom Tees, Wicked Cuts Jerky. And we want to thank everyone for supporting us, watching us, and for Token Tony and for Tony Johnson, I am Aaron. We appreciate you listening. Good luck on your bets and we'll catch you on the next one.